What's going on everybody? Welcome to the Windows tutorial on how to build your own VST. As you see, we're going to be making VST compatible audio plugins and VST is a registered trademark of Steinberg Media Technologies GmbH. So basically we're going to be using their software development kit, something we can use to make our audio plugins. So you can go ahead, download it on their website, just like that. And we're going to go ahead and save that and then just go ahead and ext extract it since it's a zip file. And we'll wait for that to load up and then you'll see the main folder. And in this folder, we have a couple of scripts, it looks like, and uh, VST3. So there's a difference be between the VST3 and 2. And then we have some licenses here. It's very important that you read those because in order to publish your own VST3 plugin, you need to have a license or you need to have it be open source and under the GPL v3 license. So you need to follow their guidelines and even show this little trademark here, that logo. There's a lot of guidelines you should read in general. And also we can look at the README. That will help us kind of get started here. What we're gonna do today is build the example VST plugins, just to kind of get ourselves familiar with this kit. So here we see the instructions on how to build on Windows. Pretty helpful to us. We're gonna be using something called a compiler. So right now we can go to the, the kind of instructions that are used to create our plugin, sort of the recipe for making it. And for us right now, it's kind of in English, or at least it's more human language, I would like to say. It's, it's not exactly English, but it's words that we can recognize like, oh, we see here OS, A delay controller, create view. Those are things we recognize. And that's a programming language called C++. But what we need to do is we need to convert all of that text we recognize into machine code. So we need Visual Studio compiler to do that on Windows. All right, so we're gonna download that, install that. And there's also some additional packages I thought might be helpful to install. I don't know if these really matter that much, but I'm gonna go ahead and install them. They're just all the C++ ones. So there's a lot of these guys. I don't think we'll need the graphics one, but I, who knows, I'll check it anyway. I have no idea what I'm doing because I'm a Mac developer, so. This is kind of new to me, honestly, first time using Visual Studio, but so far it's been great experience, you know? All right, so we're gonna go ahead, install that. And there we go, it's up and running. And we're greeted with this project welcome window. We're just gonna close that because we're not gonna create a project. It's already gonna be generated for us. And we can do that using this command you see here, cmake.exe, basically a program, and then we can tell it to generate our Visual Studio code project. Or sorry, just Visual Studio. That's a different program. We're just using Visual Studio. But anyway, um, then we're gonna go into our SDK, and this right here is the command prompt. And we type cd to go into that directory, and you can just drag the directory. So we go into the SDK folder, and then we're gonna make a directory called build. And we'll go into that directory, and then we're gonna try running CMake, but it's not recognized because it looks like we don't have CMake. So we're what we can do is actually download the binary of that for Windows. Just go on the CMake website. And then I'll choose the Windows 64 bit since that's the one I'm running. And go ahead and install it. And I'm gonna check that box right there. Add CMake path for all users. And then go ahead and install.
All right, and there we have it. So now let's try again, see what happens. And we'll just remove that because those two dots tell it to go to the previous directory. But it looks like we're having an error here. Um, a problem creating a directory. And you can see that it didn't actually build our VSTs for us. So I'm wondering if this um, script that will copy the VST2 stuff will help. I don't think it will. So let's just move on and download our digital audio workstation that we're going to load our software in, our plugin. So I'm going to be using Cakewalk, which is free for Windows. It's made by BandLab, if you heard of them. Pretty cool. It's actually a really decent digital audio workstation for free. So... And then we can just go ahead and log in once we install their little installer. And I'm going to log in with Google. All right. And then we can go to apps. And that's how we'll install Cakewalk. And I'm just going to check all those. Although I probably don't really need them. Doesn't hurt. I have enough storage. All right. I'm going to do the basic. I'll just go ahead, click next, install those guys. All right, so now let's figure this out. So it looks like we're having a problem creating a directory. So what that tells me is there's something going on with the permissions. Like, can I create directories within that directory? I don't think so. So we're going to go ahead, open the properties, uh, not advanced here, and open properties. And we can see it's read only. So that might be our issue there. So apply, uncheck that box, and then apply. And it will ask us if we want to do this to all the folders and files within that. I'm not sure how safe this is, because you got to be careful if this stuff is like on a web server or something. It's, you just got to be careful with permissions and all that. But I think we'll be fine in this case. Um, so yeah, we'll uncheck the read-only in it. And you can see BandLab is still installing some of its stuff in the background and then let's go ahead and recreate our build directory and go to command prompt again and to go to that build directory we can just do cd change directory and then drag our build directory in there with a space in between and then we can run that command again see if it's going to work this time looks like we're not getting any errors so far so that's good sign and also the compiler, you can see it prints out what our compiler is. Remember our translator to turn that English into machine code. And here we are. Here's our project files. And we could go ahead, open that up. I'm going to open up the all build one. And yeah, we just click on that VCX proj. It's going to open right up. And the local Windows debugger is, if you press that, then it will start building all of your code. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And right now it's actually building our VST3 plugins, which is crazy. So if we go into that directory, you'll see all the plugins that it's built. And if we go into contents and we look, what does the VST3 file actually look like? Well, we can open this up with Notepad and see that it's kind of gibberish looking. It doesn't look like Eng English at all. And that's because it's computerish. It's machine code. So we can't read it as humans. It doesn't have any meaning. The ASCII characters don't parse to any meaning to us. So we'll, um, we'll go ahead and copy all of these VST3s into whatever folder uh, Cakewalk is using. So I'm going to look up the folder on Windows where our VST three stored and it looks like they're in program files common files vst3 so we're going to go ahead and go to that directory and there we can see there it is and i'm not really sure what to do here i think we'll just create a new folder and then we'll call it steinberg examples because these are their example plugins from the sdk and then we can go ahead, paste all our stuff in here. It's going to ask for permission just because it's a kind of system directory. So just 
security reasons. And now we can go ahead and launch BandLab and, I mean, Cakewalk and see what happens. See if it loads our, the plugins we just built. And I'm just kind of checking all the default settings here because I don't really care about making music today. It's sad to say we will in some other videos, but I just want to see our plugins kind of load here or the ones we built. They're not really ours. They're the Steinberg ones. But anyway, I just loaded up a new project here. And if we go to the, I'm not really seeing them here if we go to insert audio effects. So I just hit the scan for VSTs and we'll see if that makes it pop up. Still not seeing where I could find them though. So I'm gonna go to preferences and see maybe what VST directory is this looking in. So VST settings, and it looks like it's looking in the right one where we put all the VSTs. So we should see them in some place. So I'm gonna go back to the effects. Let's go back to that and just see if we see some names pop up. Uh, it looks like, oh, there's our A delay in the delay. So that was one of the example ones. Um, so yeah, I think they're all in here somewhere. There's a, all the way at the bottom, there's one called uncategorized. And, oh yeah, there you have it. There's our hello world with UI. That's a good one to show because it has the, the VST compatible logo on it, which is kind of required to display um, if you read the license. But yeah, it looks pretty cool. The window resize doesn't work for some reason, but there you have it. There's our VST on Windows. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and stay tuned for the next one. Peace.